Alrighty, good morning. Welcome again to my uh, plant filled living room. A bit of a slightly longer class today. I'm going to explore some different elements. And you're playing with the idea of find yourself and then lose yourself. They can work simultaneously. So I invite you to come to a comfortable seat. You can sit, this is called hero's pose, the sit bones on the heels, or you can sit cross-legged. I'm just going to introduce some moving meditation. So I invite you to follow along with me and then when you get the hang of it in your own time. So we're going to start off in a lotus position with the arms. So like you're a flower and you're gonna bring the connection of your thumb to your fingers, almost like, you know, a little bit of the Italian stallion style, mamma mia. And the shoulders nice and broad, opening right through that chest space. And the head stacked over the heels. The inhalation brings the hands up and over. And then backs of the palms connect. They dive down through the crown of the head, third eye space, the nose, the lips, the chin, the throat. They flip over and pause. And then on inhalation, we pull it up, we flip it in reverse. Inhalation. Belly expands, chest expands, side rib expands. So let's give it a go, a few cycles together. You can close down your eyes softly, or you can keep them open, looking at me, if you get lost. So we'll start with a generally big inhalation into the belly, just a centering sense of feeling, inflating the balloon. And just let that out of the mouth. One more just like that, big inhale. As the arms come up, and the backs of the palms, the backs of the hands connect. And then exhaling, diving down, exhale, past the nose, the lips, the chin, the palms, the hands flip. Still got connection with the thumb. Pause on the exhale breath. And then inhale as the belly expands, flipping it back around, opening. And then reconnect just with the natural breath. A couple of cycles of your normal breath here. Inhale. Expand the belly. As the arms go up, connection, diving down, center of the head, the nose, and then flipping and exhaling, exhale, exhale, to the center, right in that spot, right in the middle of your chest. Inhale, open, new life, new air, open, new possibilities, finding yourself. And then exhale, exhale, diving down, pause, contemplation, inquiry, who am I? Shoulders relaxed. Inhale, open. Tracing it up. Spreading the wings. Open. And then hands come up the thighs. Reconnect. Natural breath. Maybe a little bit of rocking over your heels, or if you're sitting cross legged from side to side, you can move your torso. And then pause. Just here, just this moment.
coming forwards onto hands and knees. We're going to find a cat cow. So these are chest lifts and the backs of the feet plant. And the exhale, we push back, pushing the hips. Belly draws closer to the spine. Head hang. Inhale, we come forwards. Exhale, pushing backwards, melting down. Inhale, chest, heart, chin, all lifts. Feeling brightness across the collarbone. Exhale, pushing back. And then cutting loose, finding a bit of freestyle. Breaking the patterns of just that linear motion of backwards and forwards. So you can almost find like a hula hoop style. You can roll around the wrists. Change the wrists so the fingers are now facing to my knees. And roll around the wrists here, warming the wrists up. You can still maintain a bit of a cat and cow action going on. Accentuating through all the curves of the spine. All the areas that might not get enough attention. We come forwards, change the wrist position, put them out sideways, and we'll go side to side drop. You want your fingers to be spread as wide as you can. Then last one, it's a bit of a tricky one, we go on the backs of the wrists. Straighten the arms. And just pause here. So I'm leaning backwards, putting the weight towards my heels, really accentuates the stretch. Have a breath. Let it go. Hands back to normal. Come and sit back down again. We're gonna get into the hips, a bit of hip flossing now. So I'm gonna face the camera. So come into a bear sit, it's almost like, I don't know, 45 degree angle under my legs. And then rotating just the range of motion that works for you. If your knees can hit the floor, that's good. If not, just playing with what you can. It's important that your posture stay as vertical as you can. At the same time, you rotating from one sit bone to the other sit bone. Hands can be on the floor as well, they don't need to be up. Just flossing through the hips. Finding all the pockets within the hip where the actual hip bone sits inside the socket. This time we'll come back round. So this is my right leg, it can be your left leg, doesn't matter really. We'll come into a bit of a 90-90 sit, or a deer sit. So if you look at my front leg 90, back leg 90, scoot onto my glute, my right glute, my fingers come forwards, and I just pulse, lower down on the exhale. <clears throat> Inhale, lift the chest. Getting into that ever so nice glute stretch. And then lifting up. And pulse, find your rhythm. Four more like that. If you want the bonus challenge, hands out to the side, squeeze the fists, and you lower over your front leg without touching the floor. So that's the next level. It's the double shot cappuccino that is. Lower down. For three. For two. For one. And we pause, hover, lift, yep, <sighs> flip through, find the other leg now, really warming up those glute muscles, the biggest muscles, strongest muscles in the body. So once again, might want to move some of the flesh off that grounded buttock. If it isn't working for you, you can put some padding underneath that butt and that helps lift it up. All right, here we go again for five. So with the fingers down, or with the hands up. 
for four, three, feeling it nice in the glute, two, good posture in the chest, back of the head leads on the way up, for one, I think I've lost count already, and we pause, five, four, three, two, one, hands ground, explore a little bit more range of motion, coming back up onto your seat bones, floss it through the hips, one more each side, enjoy. And then we'll come to the top of the mat, getting ready, spread through the hands, spread through the fingers, I'm getting warm. And then we're going to engage the toes, lift the knees, hover the knees off the ground. And the right knee goes to the back of the right arm, the back, left knee, back of the left elbow, back, the right knee, back of the left elbow, going across the body, and the same left to right, across the body, back. Coming into a crouch as the bum goes towards the heels. Find a little stretch here and then shoot the hips up. Pedal the feet out. Feeling connection with the hands, with your hands on your mat. Lowering the heels down, pedaling through them. A little bit of side to side motion maybe. Finding your first downward dog of the day. Let your head hang out heavy. And then lifting onto the toes. And from here, lifting on the toes, push more shoulders open. Armpits melting towards the floor. The part of the elbow that looks like an eye, the soft part spiraling to the front of the room and then sink into the heels. Have a breath. Tiptoe the feet to the front of the mat. Then melting forwards, halfway lift, so the hands come up to shins or thighs, back of the head lifts, broaden through the collarbone, exhale, melt forwards, grab opposite elbow, hanging out, weight comes slowly into the front of the toes. So the weight's a little bit more in the front of my feet, activating my hamstring a bit more. My legs have a, my knees have a slight bend in them, particularly for the hyperextenders out there. I'm using the strength of the muscles, not the joints. Couple more sways. Relax the teeth, the tongue, the lips. From here, unravel, leg present, knees soft, vertebrae stack, no rush, arms follow up as well, coming up to the top, hands meet in a prayer, let them simmer down to the heart center, meet in the space, equal energy, connecting in, noticing maybe one hand's Pushing harder than the other hand this morning. Then let the hands drop. Connect in with your feet. Little rock forwards and backwards. Connect in with the hips, lifting the hips. Lower body grounding down. Upper body lifting up tall. Bit of pride in the chest as the arms inhale, rise overhead. Exhale, melting forwards. Hands on the floor, hands on shins. Halfway lift, the backs, the shoulder blades pull together. And the weight still forwards in the toes. Exhale, melt down, okay, let the head hang heavy. And then we take our first step backwards, we find plank, stepping back, spread through the fingertips, spread through the hands, holding plank, heels stacked behind my toes, and pause here. 
and we go right knee, right elbow, and back, left knee, to the left elbow, and back, and then right knee, to the left elbow, pause, back, left knee, right elbow, back, lower the knees, climbing back, almost to a child's pose position, and we come forwards, keeping the elbows tucked into our side, elbows bending, brightness in the chest, coming forwards, chaturanga on bent knees, lower down, wiggle the hips, ground through the tops of the feet, kneecaps lift, inhale, chest rises, cobra, exhale, simmer down, one more like that, pushing into the hands this time a little bit more, push up, lift cobra, and then simply lift the hands off the floor, using the back muscles, not hunching up, long neck, reach into the front of the room with the, through the head, ground through the hands, push back, child's pose, one breath here, make a count, and tabletop. So this tabletop position, you're gonna now straighten out your left leg, left leg goes back, long and straight. Connection through the palms into the ground. Lift the left leg up. Notice if it's just spiral, pushing it back, active toe. And we're gonna bend and straighten, getting into the hamstring. Bend and straighten. Saying good morning to the hamstring, waking it up. Bend and straighten. I think it's three, four, five, both let our uh, leg long, and then reach the right hand out in front. If you can, extra challenge. And I'm gonna cut a 45 degrees if I swivel, and then back to center. 45, back to center. For three, reaching long, front hand reaching to the windows over here, and my back leg reaching to the back of the room. For four, Five, pause, back to center, both hands and knee connect. Push the bum back into your crouch, onto the toes, lift the hips, downward dog. Tiptoe the toes to the front of the mat again. Melt down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lower down. Curling up, curl up through the spine. Curl. Hands come up overhead. And then down through the heart center. From here, I want you to bring your toes together. Heels can be apart, or feet and um, so heels and toes can be together if you like. We're going to sink the weight back into our sit bones using our glutes again. Like this is a, almost like what I picture going down one of the ski slopes when they go through their massive jumps. Then the fingers brush the floor. They come up, open, broad through the chest, activating those upper back muscles. A pinky fingers spiraling inwards. And then I'm going to take a bind behind my back, still in my chair position. Interlace the fingers, run the knuckles down the seat bones, pulling them towards the floor. Shoulder tips pull backwards, and then I bend into my knees. Let the head hang out. So take the arms and shoulders. Up and above it. Have a breath here. Reconnect. Squeeze the palms together. Couple more breaths there. Squeeze the palms together. 
and then break the grip, massage down the backs of the legs, the glutes, the hamstrings, the calves. Hands come onto shins, or if you're ready, onto the floor. Lift, it's a halfway lift. Back of the head is, is the, the point that you should be feeling lifting through here as the pivot points to the hips. Melt forwards. Hands onto the ground, step back into plank. And if you're ready for your first Chaturanga Dandasana, you're gonna bring the shoulders forwards onto the toes now. Elbows hugging to the side and pause. Tuck the toes under, upward facing dog. And if you wanted to, you're more than welcome to use the knees on the ground and take the option with the cobra. Choose the journey that works for you this morning. Hips lift up and back. Uncurl the toes. Coming back down. Hands and knees. So this time I'm going to take my right leg back. I'll show you from this side. Right leg goes back. Touch down with the mat. My shoulders are stacked over my wrists. I lift my heel. I check in with my hips. Make sure that they're as equal as they can be. And then pulling the heel in and lifting the leg and straighten. Bend and straighten. Two, three. Keep that head sending to the front of the room length. The tailbone shoot to the back of the room. And four. For five, pull it in, pause, hold, a little bit of shaking, maybe hamstrings start to cramp a little bit, and then shoot it out the back. My left hand now reaches forward as well. Find the balance first, and then we open up on the 45 for one, for two, for three, I've got the wobbles this morning, for four, Five, lift that hip, pause, three, two, and one, hands lower, knees lower, come back, child's pose, find your child's pose. Let the head ground for a second. Take a, take a deep belly breath with a smooth, gentle exhale. And to come out of child's pose this time, like we do when we come to our standing position, roll through the spine, ripple through the spine, as the head's last to lift. No need to use the hands. And we find as the chest starts to lift, and then the head reaches as tall as it can, like a puppeteer's pulling on the top of your head. From here, we'll plant our hands and we'll find our downward facing dog. We'll take the right foot up and out the back. Check in with the hip here. Pull it in tight, the curl knee goes through, the, through to the chest. My bum lifts, I'm on my toes of my left foot, lifting up as tall as I can, rounding in my back. Exhale, lower the left heel. Shoot the leg back up into space, reaching tall as you can without letting the hips splay out to the side. And then pulling it forwards one more time, bringing my right foot to where my right thumb is. Grounding through my fingertips, connection. Inhale, chest lifts, collarbones broaden, coming forwards. Extra weight into that front right foot. Exhale. Melt it back. Scissoring action happening between the feet here. As the right heel is pulling to the back of the room, the left heel is driving to the front of the room to square my hips up. Sink again into that front hip. Inhale. Find yourself. Exhale. Hips lift. 
This time, inhale, come forwards, ground the left hand so it's flat on the floor, not on your finger pads anymore, or if you were using a block, you can keep using the block. This time, the inhale brings the, the arms up, or the, the doors of the DeLorean up into the sky, if you want a Back to the Future reference. Wings of a bird, <laughs> choose the analogy. Bring the hand back to the ground, now I'm going to have to spin around to show this, but we're going to swivel the left foot so you go onto the blade edge, so the left foot goes parallel to the mat, and the right foot follows, right foot follows, so both my toes are now parallel to the long edge of my mat, and then with my hands on the floor, finding some juicy inner hip, inner groin stretch, or Skandasana. So just pulsing left to right here. Just a bit of play, a bit of free time. I invite you to just stay in high Skandasana for this one. Flossing through the hips. And then coming back to the left. Bend into the knees, take the hands off, and then transition back to the right side. Back into your low lunge. I'm going to reverse Skandasana now, so my left hand makes contact, and I'm going to swivel my pinky edge onto the blade side of my right foot. You can lower it down so it's about hip level. I'm on the blade edge toes of my left foot, so basically this is the reverse of what we just did. I'm going to lift up my hip as my arm reaches up and over, paint the rainbow, exhale, hip sinks, hand comes back and we lift again on the inhale, exhale, back round, inhale, lifting up and over, Exhale, back round. One more just like that. Inhale, lifting up and over, pushing through that right foot, the one that's facing to the side of the room. Spiral the chest up just for a second. And then bring with both hands back to the mat. And then finding the space in between that right leg melting down into your lizard stretch. You let the head hang out. If you've got a little bit more range of mobility, you can come down onto your elbows. And if you tend to roll then out onto the outer edge of the pinky toe on that foot, notice my foot is lifted, that's okay. Just play around with the different variations of the stretch. So with the foot grounded and then letting the left hip come forwards or letting the knee splay out almost like a butterfly wing so there's a few variations of this stretch just find the one that works for you relax into it smooth breath in smooth exhale Shifting the weight back now. Coming into our half splits, so we shift the weight back. Front leg is straightened. Then reposition it to move it forwards a little bit. Let the body melt. Couple of breaths here. Couple of breaths before we find some fire. Inhale, coming forwards, plant both hands, strong through the back leg, peeling the right knee back, take it back to plank. Finding your variation of Chaturanga, if that's with your knees down, or your knees lifted, 
you choose the journey for you. Lower down, shoulder blades, shoulders come forwards, brightness through the chest, legs engaged, kneecaps hovering off the floor, whether you're in cobra or upward facing dog. Little bit of head lift, lengthening to the front of the room. Peel it back, roll over the toes. Breath here. Inhale, left leg goes up and back. Lift onto the right toes. Exhale, curl it in, tiger curl. Knee comes to the chest or navel. Inhale, lift up through the back. And exhale, curl it through and forwards. Left hand comes to meet the space where the left thumb is or was. And we sink into that front hip. Knee stack all over the ankle. Chest lifts, brightness through that front of the body. That's where the energy is. As I'm straightening my back leg as much as I can. I'm fi finding it in my hip, hip is where I should be feeling a bit of source. Exhale, melt over the front leg. Straighten it. Relax the neck. Inhale, come forwards again. Brightness between the collarbones. Exhale, let them out. This time with a new breath in, coming forwards, spreading through all the fingers on my right hand as my palm makes contact with the mat. Inhale, spiral the left arm up. DeLorean door, or the Tesla door these days, opens up. Exhale, back to the mat. One more like that, peel it up and open. And bring it back to the mat. And we find our Skandasana play again. So the, my right foot spirals to face the long side of my mat. And then my left foot follows, both feet parallel now. And just flossing through the hips from left to right, finding that delicious side stretch. You can crawl the fingers across from one side to the other, slightly lower variation. We can be up as tall as works for your hips. Finding something that feels good, something that needs a little bit of extra love and attention today. Because the missing factor, or the, the component that I didn't say yet, is that when you find yourself and you lose yourself, that's when you can start to love. Love someone else, love everything else. Mm. One more, coming back to the front of the mat towards my left foot. Spiral pivot on the left foot. It's going to do a whole 180 now to show you this one from the back this time. So blade edge of my left toe, my pinky toe on both feet now, basically on the long edge of the other side of the mat in the reverse Gandasana. Inhale, my arm lifts up and over. Exhale, shooting it towards the back of the room as my hip sinks towards the floor. Inhale, lift up and over. Exhale, painting it horizontally. One more like that. Lift, active through that hip, active through the outside of the leg. Pause. And then spiral back to the front of the mat or the top of your mat. Right knee grounds, coming into that space between your left, your left foot with both of your hands and you can melt into your lizard stretch or lizard pose. You can come onto the elbows again. Sense of connection. This 
feels so good in the hip. You can play with different positions, come up a little bit taller, reverse the position, let the shoulders spin out. We can have the foot fully grounded, all four corners, find something that works for you. And then shifting the hips back, melting over the front leg, Ha Hanuman. The warrior monkey go, Hanuman, Hanuman Asana. Jump from India to Sri Lanka. Melt your head, let the skin drip like candle wax off your bones. Coming forwards on the inhale breath. Grounding through both hands, spread through the fingertips, active back leg now. Without scraping the mat like a cheese grater, can you pick your leg up, take it back into plank. So we once again shift the shoulders forwards onto the toes, lower down. Elbows bent, untuck the toes, push up. Find your flow. Over the toes, downward facing dog. Breath here. Lower the knees now. You're going to find connection in our, in our um, forearm plank. I want you to focus on using from the palm all the way down to the elbow. This whole space, not just the, not just the palm, not just the elbow. So here we are. Forearm plank. Bones not accentuated up in the air, nor hips are not sagging to the ground. Just, just right. A little bit of doming through the chest. As I'm finding a bit of an uh, arch or dish position through my um, pecs. Just enjoy here. If you want a little bit more excitement. Bring the energy in your elbows and your hands, pull it traction to the back of the room, and then traction the, the friction with your toes to the front of the room. And the equal and opposites generally start to get the shakes going. So swiveling my heels to the left, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna find a side support on my elbow. Important to push through the collarbone here, not just collapse into the socket. And if you want, you can have your feet staggered like me, or you can bring them on top of each other. Right arm comes down, put it in reverse, and my hips swivel to the right side of the room. Open up, spiraling my chest to the Roof almost, engage in the glutes, squeeze the legs, lift your hips. Feet can be stacked or staggered, you choose. We're only going to be here for a couple more breaths. And the left elbow spirals back to the mat. Walk the feet in, pushing through the elbows. Pushing the head away from the floor, finding dolphin. We're just going to play here for a second as we take the right leg up. Lifting the toes right to the ceiling. Take it down. Left leg sends to the sky. Like the tip on a skyscraper, the lightning rod on the skyscraper. Active through the toes. Can you push up a little bit more for five, for four, broaden through the shoulders, pushing through the elbows for two, one, walk it back out, plank, lower the hips, sphinx, Whew, we made it, Whew, whoo. Sphinx, so sphinx now, my elbows are under my shoulders or a little bit further in front and still trying to actively lift through the chest Whew. 
and I can lower down now. Just when you thought we're out of the heat zone, got a couple more things on the roll. So bring your palms to face the floor, and you're going to start by lifting the kneecaps, basically by squeezing, engage your quads. So my toes are still connected, but my kneecaps are lifted. Now I'll bring my feet off the floor. So I'm putting the pressure into my hips and my hip bones. My glutes are squeezed. And I'm not trying to lift up so much as I'm trying to stretch my toes to the back of the room. Next, I'm going to lift my torso. My chest rises. Perfect position for surfing. And then I can lift the palms and the hands. Hands, my palms are facing towards the ground. You get a sense of feeling like you're almost Superman here, or super, superwoman. And then bonus round challenge. Swivel the arms out in front if you're ready for it. Spiraling the pinky fingers in towards each other. Length into the front of the room, stretch to the back of the room, and pause for five, for four, three, two, one, and long. Wiggle the hips, choose a side for the head. And here we're going to find a, a chest opener. So bring both arms into a cactus position, like like almost like a W and then bring your right hand onto your fingertips bring it up, elbow comes up at the same time dripping the toes up and over behind the left leg should be feeling something in a little bit in the shoulder, but mostly in the peg. And you can walk the right hand in closer. And it's important that you're facing away from the arm that's grounded or feeling the stretch. And then when you're there, reconnect in, deep belly breathing. In double slow time now, bring the right leg back over, using my right hand as the support, or the speed brake to lower myself down. Double slow time. Rolling back and around. And the exact same setup, we're going to do it on the other side now. So you don't need to move around, I'm moving just so I can talk to the camera. So I find my cactus position with my arms. I bring my left fingertips in closer towards my bra line and then I push up and over, taking the leg up and over and if you want a little bit more juice you can actually straighten the right arm you might find a different angle with it just drip the toes behind Breathe in to the ribs. Feel them expand like an accordion player. Mm. Don't see many accordion players these days unless you go to Europe. And they have to wear lots of gold badges. Double slow time, take the weight into that left hand as you're rolling the hips back to ground onto the floor. Give the hips a little wiggle side to side. Draw your hands next to your, um, next to your, your pecs. And then pushing up and back, wide knee, child pose, just for a second.
Climbing forwards. Active into the hands, push back into the toes. Let's find that crouch position just one more time. One of the most underrated positions, I believe, in yoga. Does wonders for me. I hope you feel something out of it as well. So I'm on my toes. My, my heels are lifted in this position. And then unravel and then just booty pop and lift into downward facing dog. One breath here. Maybe a little step forwards. Jump to the top of the mat or you can walk. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins, exhale, drip over the body. Are you scrunching your toes? Are your toes nice and spread? Can you see the light coming from between your toes? Ripple the spine up all the way to stand. The shoulders come up and then the neck and then the head. Everything stacks. Hands come to hands come to prayer above your head. Pretending you're the Eiffel Tower for a moment. And then let the hands simmer into the heart space. So find a connection with your left foot now, maybe a little knee bend, spread through the toes, pick your right knee up. Wobbles are gonna happen, but that's okay. So my knees up, hip level, I'm going to do internal rotation as I bring the big toe towards the sky, back to neutral, and I'm going to bring my pinky toe as far to the sky as I can, external rotation, flossing the hip again, big toe to sky, pinky toe to sky, one more like that, big toe to sky, pinky toe to sky. Lovely. Straighten the leg out long and bend. Firing up our legs. Straighten and bend. Not leaning back. And you find activity. Keep the body stacked. We've got two more. Straighten. Hands can be on hips. Hands can be above head. You choose. Straighten. One more. Straighten. And from this bend position, Grab your peace fingers, peace man, between your big toes, and bring your knee up. I'll show a variation of this if this doesn't work. And then from here, you straighten the leg long. And then being as tall as you can, you can use a strap around your foot. That's variation one. And then we're gonna peel the gate open on the hip and pausing on the full extent on the outside. Now if that doesn't work for your hamstrings, grab the knee and then rotate just through the knee. You don't need to worry about grabbing the toe. And then when we're in that fully open side position, left hand's reaching to the opposite side. Can you turn your head away from that right foot, and then double slow time, bringing your back into the center line, release the grip, keep the foot up, shoot the right foot back and behind you, warrior three, spread between the toes on both the grounded leg and the lifted leg, bend into the front left knee, Coming down, and then warrior two, turning your back foot out, so it's 90 degrees, alignment of heel into the arch of foot, bending into that front knee, lift through the chest, spiral the right hip down and towards the front, spread the toes. Inhale, bring the arm up and over, left arm reaches back, front leg still bent, and then exhale, put it in reverse. Forearm to leg, side body stretch. And we go back again. Inhale, arm comes up and over. Reach up and over. Exhale. 
arm meets thigh, spiral the center of your chest to the sky, grounded through that back pinky edge toe on that right foot. And from here coming warrior two, cargo the arms to the floor. I've got myself twisted up so many times. So we're in our low lunge with our hands on the floor and like we did at the start, I'm gonna spiral my pinky edge toe out. So I'm finding my reverse skandhas and right hand's taking the weight. And we're gonna have our double whammy here. So if this is for you, this is the side position we're gonna hold. If you want a little bit more source, you can stack the feet. If you want even more, the double shot, you can spread the feet. But if you're ready to try something different, get a bind of the toes, the peace fingers on the toes again, lift the knee up in towards the armpit, and then we can straighten the leg and take the bind. Smooth, easy breathing helps you. Then bending the knee back down if you went up, and took the position. And then drip the toes behind. Connection with the leg behind onto the hamstring of the right leg as you spiral up and over. Wild thing. Flip it in reverse, coming back, three-legged plank, left leg lifted, and if you have the strength today, lower down. Both feet ground now, lift up, upward facing dog, exhale, over the toes, down facing dog. Come to the top of the mat again, little step, hop. Float, step, tiptoe, you choose your journey. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Rippling up. Every single vertebrae stacking on top of each other. Because one of my favorite stretches out of the whole of yoga is that ripple up. Feels amazing. All right, top of the mat as the arms lift up and overhead. Find the prayer, Eiffel Tower, welcome to Europe. Hands come down, center of the chest. I'm gonna pick my left knee up this time. And I'm gonna find the internal rotation. So my big toe spirals to the sky. External rotation, you can see how much more improvement my external rotation on my left leg needs. It's a bit clunky. Internal, toe spirals to the sky, big toe. External. Almost looks like I'm not even doing it. <laughs> With knee lifted up high, straighten it out. Bend, straighten for one, two. Not leaning back, tall as you can. Three, for four. One more, pause, hold, bend it in, lower it down. Have a little shake, a little pause, before we find our peak pose. This is it, haven't been more ready for this all day than this. This is the most ready you'll be today, I guarantee it. Lift the knee up. So once again, you've got the option to take the knee, open through the hip, or if you want, take the piece, man. Knee comes up. I find it easier if you bring it up towards the, the armpit as high as you can, and then straightening it out long. Once again, trying to find length in the upper body, and then before you start to open it up, find that way. And then spiral the leg open. Make sure the inner thigh on this right grounded leg is also active, pushing up as tall as it can and then spread through the chest, through the collarbones. Maybe, just maybe one day, or maybe today's the day, turn that right head away from the leg. As we exhale, 
We bring it all back in, back to where it started. And then we release the grip and we hold it there. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. We shoot it straight back. Warrior, three. Feels nice. Different muscle groups. We pause here, find stability. Smooth, easy breathing helps with stability. Airplane taking off position. And then I bend into my front right leg and I dance my left foot into the sand, finding warrior two. Scooch the, re make any readjustments you need. So I'm scooching my right foot forward to bend into my knee. To find my warrior. Warrior is a strong position. So bring a bit of strength to your mat. Inhale. Right, so exhale, find the back bend, reaching up and over like a rainbow, not dumping into the side body. And we're coming back in, inhale, exhale, L R forearm to thigh, reaching up and over, spiral the nipples to the sky, active through the back leg, pinky edge toe, flirting with the ground, inhale, coming back up. We put it in reverse, flip it up, put it in reverse, up and over, still bending into that front leg. Don't turn the gas off that front leg. Flip it. Left hand swirls up and over, reaching length, the longest you've been today. Smooth inhale to rise back to the middle. Cargo the hands, make contact with the ground. Once again, I'll come to a position where you can see me. Spread as wide as you can through that left hand. Spiral to the long side of the mat, toes to the long side of the mat in the reverse skandhasana. Lift through the hips, that's step one. Hand ground, step one. Hips lift, step two I should say. And then from here, more than welcome to stay here. Or if you have wrist problems, like we did in the forearm plank, find that position there. But if not, and you want a little bit more juice, we've already taken the bind ones. Let's take it one more time for today. Bring it up towards the elbow, stack the hips, and we can lift and open. Never been more ready for this than today. Best day of my life. Open the hips. Find stability. Then bend the knee ever so slightly. Bring it back. Drip the toes behind. Connection of the right calf behind the left leg. And then open through the hips. Find your wild thing. And flip it up and over. Hop on that right leg. Three legged plank. Lower down, chaturanga, pause. Toes, both toes ground before coming into upward facing dog. Lift through that heart, place of courage. All over the toes, down facing dog. One breath, exhale, lower the knees. Start to wind it down. You find a seat on your mat, Bring your left foot in to your thigh, to your inner thigh of your right leg. Inhale the arms and rise up and overhead. Exhale. Find the one legged forward fold. Melting down. Lose yourself. Equal weight through the buttocks. Try and go for a little bit more length as opposed to depth. We can test that. We go into our finger pads. We lift up. We find a halfway lift here. Just pause in the halfway lift. And exhale, melt down again. Ripple 
the spine up. And walk the hands in. Left hand comes behind you. As I shimmy my left knee underneath me, I find one more side body opener just to counteract the stretch. Side body, right foot makes contact with the earth. Left leg and my right leg is almost like a kickstand position. Come and sit back down. Changing legs now, so left leg goes out long in front. My right foot makes contact with the inner thigh. I start by reaching up tall. And then folding. Folding forwards. Pull the fingers out, going for length. Relax the neck. Relax the shoulders. Barely breathing. Feel the cold air coming in and out of your nostrils. Come onto your finger pads. Inhale. Halfway lift. And then exhale. Melt down. Ripple the spine up, stacking the vertebrae. My right hand comes behind me. I shuffle my right knee so it's under my base. I'm a kickstand. I'm going to reach up and over. Last side body stretch of the day. How good. Come and sit down. And then double slow time. Make contact with my feet, heels and balls of my feet. And I'm gonna ripple my spine down to the ground. Bit of extra core. Or if you're ready, just flop. Let it all go. But can we do it with control? Uh, take up some space. I'm gonna lift my left leg up. I'm going to shimmy my hips to the right side of my mat. So I'm going to lift it up and over. And I find a side stretch. Ensuring both of the backs of my shoulders or my shoulder blades have contact with the ground. So I'm going to be lifting up. And then, once again, if you need a little bit more, a little bit of paprika, put the right hand on the right thigh and just using the residual body weight. Let it melt down. You can turn your head to the left. Connect in here. Inhale, left knee comes back up. Reconnect it with the earth. Wiggle through the hips. And if your lower back really isn't playing games today, and you want something a little bit softer on the lower back, bring both feet to the ground and simply just knock the knees over to the side. But to set up for the other side, I shuffle my left hip to the right side of my mat, lift my right knee up and over. Once again, you can add a little bit of passive weight with the left hand. Turn your head away from the bent knee. Letting go. Nowhere to be, nothing to do. Just enjoying the length in the spine as it unravels. Deep, smooth breath in. And then double slow speed, exhale out. As you bring the right knee back up to the center. Find the connection with your feet on the ground. Lift your hips up. Any last positions, poses that you want now. Maybe a headstand, a handstand. I'll have a handstand class coming out soon. But for me, happy baby is all I need right now. Rocking from side to side. 
grabbing the outside edges of my feet, that's not a chain of pull. You can just grab the backs of your knees. So good. Oh good. Man. In the knees in. Time is now. Time to practice as we lengthen out. Take up as much space as you have on offer. If you need anything, some socks, a blanket. Now's the time. Put it on, get warm. Finding Shavasana. Position of practice of relaxation. Where we can feel the contribution from our nervous system as it sends the energy around our body from the practice we've just dedicated the time. time to come to your mat today, the time to practice, and the body rewards you. We can feel this when we come to places of relaxation and we can switch off, we can let the fascia rebuild, we can let the hydration move through the body, we can de-stimulate the nervous system and just feel the electrical resonance pulse around our body. Smooth, easy breathing. Let the heavy bones melt into the floor. Connection with this reassuring safety of the ground. And if you have a little bit longer, a little bit more time up your sleeve, by all means, pause the video really enjoy in your shavasana but if not start to bring some slow movements to the fingers and the toes maybe some circling of the wrists and the ankles maybe a reach of up and overhead like you're yawning like it's first thing in the morning you're reaching for your morning brew, whether that be matcha or coffee. And then a little bit more of an active get up today. Bring your knees into the chest. Just rock the knees from side to side, feet are off the ground. Eyes can stay closed. If they close down naturally, that's beautiful. Grab the backs of your legs, the hamstrings, and just some gentle rock and rolls, backwards and forwards. As you eventually rock and roll up to find a seat at the top of your mat. Connecting in with the seat bones, finding the best version of yourself today. Tall posture, slight lift through the heart. We inhale the arms up and overhead. And exhale. With the palms connected, we let them simmer down past the space in the middle of our head, the nose, the lips, the throat, pause in at the heart. Take the left hand on the heart, or the right hand on the heart, and the left hand on top, and just be in that space. A couple of circles, massage it, let it know that we're here. As we come to the end of our practice, there's nothing to be lost and there's nothing to be found. And just is, just is this beautiful moment. Thank you for taking the time to practice. Namaste.